This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on instantaneous center of zero velocity. It's from chapter 16.6 .6 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to locate the instantaneous center of zero velocity and you will be able to use the instantaneous center to determine the velocity of any point on a rigid body in general plane motion. Activities include some applications, how to locate the instantaneous center of zero velocity, a velocity analysis, and then we'll do some problem solving. So here's a bicycle wheel, and you know that the velocity of the center of the wheel is equal to the radius of the wheel times omega. But since the wheel is rotating as well, the velocity of this point of contact with the ground with respect to the center of the wheel is also r omega. So the velocity of this contact point is zero. You can tell the velocity of any point along the wheel because it is perpendicular to the instantaneous center. The point of the wheel that has the maximum velocity is the top of the wheel and it has 2 r omega. Now as this board slides down the wall, it is subjected to general plane motion, which means it both translates and rotates. Since the direction of the velocities of the ends of the board, A and B, are known, we can determine the point of instantaneous zero velocity. So that means that any point on this board, for instance the center of gravity, will have a velocity perpendicular to the line connecting the center of gravity and the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So for any body undergoing planar motion, there always exists a point in the plane of motion at which the velocity is instantaneously zero. This point is called the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Note that it may or may not lie on the body. If the location of this point can be determined, the velocity analysis can be simplified because the body appears to rotate about this point at that instant. So in this case, the board is rotating about the point IC. To locate the instantaneous center, we use the fact that the velocity of a point on a body is always perpendicular to the relative position vector from the instantaneous center to that point. Several possibilities exist, and case one is when the velocity v sub a of a point a on the body and the angular velocity omega of the body are known. In this case, the IC is located along the line drawn perpendicular to VA, which you see here. And the velocity of A is equal to R of A with respect to the instantaneous center times omega. Case 2 occurs when the lines of action of two non-parallel velocities, V sub A and V sub B, are known. So in this case, we know V sub A and V sub B. So we can draw perpendicular lines from those two vectors and where they intersect is the instantaneous center. The third case is when the magnitude and direction of two parallel velocities at A and B are known. Here we use proportional triangles to locate the instantaneous center. So you see in this case this body is, is rotating with some omega. The velocity of A and the velocity of B are both known but they're parallel. Well we can just construct this diagram and by similar triangles we can determine what the instantaneous center is. In this case here, uh, the velocity of A and the velocity of B are, are known but they're parallel and again we can just use similar triangles to determine the location of, of IC. So the velocity of any point on a body undergoing general plane motion can be determined easily, often with a scalar approach. Since the body appears to rotate about IC at this instant, the velocity of any point on the body, V sub A, V sub B, V sub C, are always perpendicular to the instantaneous center of zero velocity. And the velocity of A is given by the angular velocity times the vector between A and the instantaneous center of zero velocity. And likewise for VB and VC. So let's look at an example. This linkage undergoes the motion as shown. The velocity of the block D is known to be 3 meters per second. Find the angular velocities of links AB and BD. Well, our plan is to locate the instantaneous center of zero velocity of link BD and then solve for the angular velocities. So since the block D is moving to the right at 3 meters per second, the angular velocity of link AB is going to be 
clockwise. The instantaneous center of velocity for the link BD is located at the intersection of the line segments drawn perpendicular to VB and VD. Therefore, we can see that the instantaneous center is located along an extension of the link AB. And here you can see that uh, we know that the velocity at B is in the fourth quadrant at an angle of 45 degrees and the velocity of D is along the x-axis, so this is my coordinate system. So using trigonometry, the length from B to the instantaneous center is 0.4 times the tangent of 45. So that's 0 0.4 meters. And likewise, the distance between D and the instantaneous center is 0.4 divided by the cosine of 45. And that's 0 0.566 meters. So since we know the velocity of D, we can determine the angular velocity of BD by using the scalar equation. The velocity of D is equal to omega of BD times R of D with respect to the instantaneous center. If we were told the velocity of D is 3 meters per second, omega BD is what we're looking for, and the distance between D and the instantaneous center is 0 0.566 meters. So from this, omega of BD is equal to 5.3 radians per second, and it's counterclockwise. So now let's consider the link AB. Now AB is rotating about the fixed point A, so we know that the velocity of B is equal to omega of the link AB times RB with respect to A. But we also know that the velocity B is equal to omega of the link BD times R of B with respect to instantaneous center. So I can set this equal to this and solve for omega AB. So omega AB is equal to R of B with respect to instantaneous center times omega of BD divided by R of B with respect to A. And that equals 0 0.4 times 5.3 divided by 0.4. So omega of AB is equal to 5.3 radians per second clockwise. Here's another example. The center O of this gear set rolls with some velocity 6 meters per second. Uh, the gear rack at B is fixed. Find the velocity of point A on the outer gear. So our plan is to locate the instantaneous center of the smaller gear and then calculate the velocity at A. So since the gear rolls without slipping, the instantaneous center is located at the contact point here. So the angular velocity omega of the wheel can be determined by the velocity of O is equal to R of O with respect to instantaneous center times the omega. So from this, omega is equal to the velocity of O, which we were told is 6 meters per second, divided by the distance between O and IC, which is 0.3 meters. So omega is 20 radians per second, clockwise. So the velocity at A is equal to omega cross R of A with respect to the instantaneous center. So omega is 20 radians per second clockwise, so it's 20 in the K cross R of A with respect to the instantaneous center. It's this vector right here. It's in the second quadrant, and it's equal to minus 0.6i plus 0.3j. And when you do this cross product, you get the velocity at A is 6i plus 12j meters per second. Now you can take the square root of the sum of the squares to get the magnitude of the velocity at A. And it's equal to 13.4 meters per second. And it's located in the first quadrant, 6, 12. So theta is the inverse tangent of 12, 6, which is 63.4 degrees. This is theta. Here's another problem. This four bar linkage is moving with omega CD 
equal to 6 radians per second counterclockwise. Find the velocity of point E on link BC and the angular velocity of link AB. So our plan, this is an example of the second case in the lecture notes uh, since we know the direction of points B velocity must be perpendicular to link AB and the velocity of C is perpendicular to the link CD, we can locate the IC. Okay, let's look at link CD first. Uh, we know omega CD is 6 radians per second and we know its length, so the velocity of C is 0.6 times 6 or 3.6 meters per second. That's omega times r. Now let's take a look at length BC and this triangle CBI. We can determine this length right here. IC is equal to the tangent of 30 times 0 0.6. So that distance is 0 0.346 meters. And the distance between I and B is equal to 0.6 divided by sine of 60, which is equal to 0.693 meters. So I know that the velocity at C is equal to the distance IC times omega BC. Well, we just determined the velocity of C is 3.6, so omega BC. Is equal to velocity of c 3.6 divided by the distance between i and c, which is 0.346. So omega bc is equal to 10.39 radians per second, and it's clockwise. So let's return to link ab now. We know that the velocity of b is equal to the distance ib times omega bc. That's equal to 0 0.693 times 10.39 at 7.2 meters per second. But we also know that the velocity of B is equal to the distance between A and B times omega of AB. So therefore, 7.2 is equal to 1.2 omega AB. So omega AB equal to 6 radians per second counterclockwise. So to find the velocity at E, the velocity at E is equal to the distance between I and E times omega of the length BC. Now this distance IE right here, you can look at this triangle, and IE is equal to the square root of 0.3 squared plus 0.346 squared. And that's equal to 0.458 meters. So the velocity of point E is equal to 0 0.458 times omega BC, which is 10.39. That's 4.76 meters per second. And the direction of the velocity of E Right here, I'll call that theta. So theta is the inverse tangent of 0 0.3 over 0 0.346, 40.9 degrees. This concludes 16.6, instantaneous center of zero velocity. Next up, chapter 16.7, relative motion analysis, acceleration.